The camera is one of the most important objects in Blender. Without it, you wouldn't be able to render anything. It's basically the bridge between what you see in the viewport and the final render. But it might be a little bit confusing for beginners. So in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need about the camera. How to set up a camera, how to change the resolution, how to lock the view. I will show you different projection methods, how you can track the camera, how to add depth of field, how to make work with camera easier, and much more. So let's go right to the video. So let's take a look at this simple scene. We have a candle, we have some light objects, we have the candle light as a plane, we have a tree and we have windows. And as you can see, we already applied materials, so now we want to render the scene. But we are missing the one essential thing, which is the camera itself. So with Shift A, you can add a camera from this menu. It will appear right at the 3D cursor. So if you take a look on the camera, the camera is actually pretty small, so we can scale it by pressing S on your keyboard. And we can press G, so we can move it a little bit further from the candle. Now this is how the camera looks like as an object in the viewport. As you can see, we have the origin, which for most objects is basically the center of gravity, but here it essentially works as a pivot point. If I rotate the camera, you can see that the rotation is basically happening around the origin, which also applies for translation and for scaling. And you can actually access the view of the camera by pressing 0 on your number pad, so if I press 0, you can see that now we are in the camera view. Now, all objects in the scene that are located in this rectangle will be visible in the final render. All these other objects outside of this box will also be calculated in the render, but they won't be visible in the frame. To get out of this camera view, you just click on the mouse wheel and you move with your mouse. Now, if you would like to change the camera angle, you can just find a spot. Let's say I want to bring the camera here, so I'm gonna select the camera, and with Ctrl, Alt and 0, you can align the camera to the current view, which is way better and faster than aligning the camera manually. But if you don't want to repeat this process over and over, what you can do is press N on your keyboard, go to view, and you can lock the camera to the view, so whenever you change the view, the camera will move with the viewport. And again, if I uncheck this setting, you can see that now I can move freely. Now you can also see that there is an orange triangle above the camera and this means that the camera is currently active. So if I duplicate the camera, you can see that this camera is not active because the triangle is not solid. And this means that every time I press 0, I will go to the view of the first camera. But if you want to switch cameras or make this one active, you can just select the camera, you will right click and you will click on set active camera. This is now the active camera that will be used for rendering. Now, let's go to see some camera settings. First, if you go to the output properties, you can see that we have this resolution in pixels. So if you want to, for example, make a square render, you can change this setting to 1000. And now you will have one by one image. You can also use these presets, which are pretty useful. Here you can obviously change the frame rate, but I'm going to keep it like this. Now, if you have the camera still selected, you can find this camera icon and when you click on it, this way you will access the camera properties. So by default the lens type is set to perspective, because perspective projection is the most realistic, which means that the further you go from the object, the perspective will make it look smaller, which is basically the same how our vision works. Then you have the orthographic projection. This one is a little bit more technical. As you can see, we have no perspective and everything basically appears the same size, no matter how far we are from the object. But this projection is very useful because for example, for hard surface modeling, you need to have the precise projection without any perspective distortion. It also makes the modeling much easier because it shows everything in the true size. And lastly we have this panoramic projection, which is basically similar to the perspective, but it is specially designed to capture white areas, and you can have cool distortions like these fish islands, where you have this barrel curve effect, which is distorting the frame. Now, if you go really far with the camera from the object, you can see that the object will suddenly disappear. And this is called clipping. Basically, this camera has a visibility distance, which is this number. And as you can see, all objects that are more than 1000 meters from the camera will be clipped. So by increasing this number, we will basically increasing the visibility. And as you can see, we can now again see the scene. It also works in the opposite direction. If you go too close to the object, the camera will basically clip the geometry. So by lowering this number, you can actually get more close-up renders. Then we also have the focal length, which is measured in millimeters because that's how camera lenses are measured. The focal length basically determines how the perspective distortion is strong. The lower focal length you use, the higher the distortion will be. But if you use higher focal length, the perspective distortion will become weaker and it will be closer to the orthographic projection. When you are using a camera in the real life, you know that there is one main object which is in focus and the foreground and the background is usually blurred. 
This is because each camera has the depth of field. When you enable depth of field, the footage will become blurry. This is because we haven't selected the object that will be in the focus. And to do this, you will click on this eyedropper and you will select whatever object you want in focus. I want the camera to focus on the candle, so I'm gonna select the candle. Now we can see that the candle is sharp because it's in focus, but the tree which is in the foreground and the windows that are in the background are slightly blurred. You can control this amount of blur by this f-stop slider. Higher f-stop will make the image more sharper and lower f-stop will make the image more blurry. But what I recommend doing is adding an empty and selecting the empty as the target object. This is because the empty object is not visible in the render, so we can easily bring focus on some different objects, like the tree right here. This is also very good for animations because this is a great way how you can transition the focus to some other object. Another cool thing is that you can select the camera, you can select the empty, and you can parent the camera to the empty by using Ctrl and P on your keyboard. And let's parent to object. Now whatever you do to the empty, it will also affect the transform of the camera. You can rotate the empty, you can scale the empty, or you can move the empty. And the camera will follow it. Now sometimes when the camera is too small in comparison with the scene, I wouldn't really recommend to scale the camera by using the S on your keyboard because the scaling can also affect different things, so it is better to actually use the size of the camera here in the camera properties. And the last tip I'm gonna tell you is that when you want to drag the camera to a certain object, you can select the camera, you can go to constraints, and you will add the track to constraint. And with this eyedropper right here, you can select the target object that you want the camera to be tracked to. So now when I move the candle, you can see that it will be always centered in the camera view, which is extremely useful. And if you struggle with composition, you can actually go to the composition guides and you can enable any types of composition. So if I enable the ratio and you can see that the candle is basically right at the center. So we can make your scenes even more interesting just by using this one simple trick. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did subscribe to Graffinity to see more videos like this in the future. And if you would like to get this procedural material pack right here, you can check out the first link in the description under this video. That's all from me and I will see you in the next video.